Welcome back to the Learn WGPU series. Today we're going to be talking about implementing a 3D camera and a couple of the aspects of that camera that we need to cover to actually get a perspective view on the scene. So we're starting from this old pentagram. Penta pentagram? Pen pentagon. <laughs> well, and the tutorial continues that while we have been seeming to work in 2D, we're actually been working in 3D the entire time. This is verifiable by the fact that all of our vertices have a position of X, Y, Z. It's a three element array or VEC three. So the goal of the lesson is to change our point of view by creating a camera. A camera is something that's super common, especially in game engines like Bevy, for example. We do add CG math 0 0.18 to our dependencies. This is the library we'll be using to actually do our matrix constructions. So above our state struct down here that contains all of our surface information and bind groups and stuff like that, we're going to create a camera struct. The camera struct has an I, a target, an up, aspect, F-O-V-Y, not fovi, <laughs> Z near and Z far, as well as a function for building the view projection matrix. So we can read this struct roughly as, with the camera in this position, look at this target, both of which are vectors, with this up axis. So we're going to use an up axis of Y, which is, you know, the one that you probably already expected it to be. There's going to be an aspect ratio. So something like 16 by nine, we're going to have some field of view. So you can imagine as the field of view gets larger, or as we can fit more objects in our scene, the size those objects are going to be is going to get smaller, right? So if we can widen that field of view, make it bigger, our monitor doesn't get bigger. So if we're going to show more of the scene, we have to make those pixels smaller to show more of the objects. And then we have a near clipping plane and a far clipping plane. So what we end up with here is basically, if you take a large rectangle out in the distance and a smaller rectangle closer to us, and you draw lines from each of the corners to each of the other corners, that's basically the camera projection that we're building. So if you're unfamiliar with linear algebra, don't worry. Basically what this is doing is saying we have some four by four matrix that we're going to multiply against another four by four matrix that we're going to multiply against another four by four matrix. And the TLDR of what's happening here is that when you multiply these four by four matrices together, they're doing one transformation and then doing another transformation and then doing another transformation. So you could think of this as like one of them being a scale operation, one of them being a rotation operation, and then one of them being another scale operation or something like that. It doesn't particularly matter right now which is which, but we do get those explanations. So the view matrix moves the world to be at the position and rotation of the camera itself. Remember, we're going to have to use this view projection to multiply against another vector. So we're going to have a point in space somewhere and we're going to want to pass it through these transformations to make it look like it is somewhere in the scene. So for example, if our camera is at say one, 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 this view matrix would then move the world position of zero, zero, zero to one, one, one. The projection matrix does a similar thing, but it warps our scene. So that perspective that we get from things in the distance being further away and things closer to the camera being larger, that's what this projection matrix is doing for us. So we move the world to the camera position, then we modify the scene to have depth using the projection matrix. And then because we're using the CG math library and the CG math library is built for OpenGL's coordinate system into WGPU's coordinate system. Basically what that means is that we have a hard coded matrix here that we know will transform from OpenGL's representation to WGPU's representation. If you've never seen a matrix like this before, if you are not familiar with linear algebra, the TLDR is that if you read this diagonally, for example, this top left one means that we're not modifying X. This middle Y means we're not modifying Y. This 0.5 on Z means we're actually are modifying Z. So an identity matrix, one that doesn't change the way anything looks, would just be one in a diagonal from top left to bottom right. The TLDR for why we need a four by four matrix instead of a three by three matrix, because you know we're working with three dimensional points, right? X, Y, and Z, is because if you look at the last column here, the last column is for translations. 
So if we had a camera at like the position five, zero, zero, that would be a translation of five on the X axis. Adding five to the X axis doesn't result in a linear transformation. But what does work is if we take the three dimensional coordinates that we have, we raise them to the fourth dimension, which is why we have a four by four matrix, a four dimensional matrix. And then we apply a linear transformation called a shear, and then we flatten it back down into three dimensions. That turns out to be a translation in three dimensions. Again, not super important, but that is why we're using four by four matrices, not three by three matrices. So it wants us to add camera into our state so we can do that. And then below config, because we're gonna use some of the values from config, we need to create a camera. So this is the camera struct that we just created. The I position is the camera position. So X, Y, Z, zero, one, two. The target is where we're looking. We're looking at world space coordinate zero, zero, zero. The up axis, we're setting to the unit Y. So if we printed this out, I would expect this to look something like zero, one, zero because it's a VEC3 in the unit Y direction. The aspect ratio is the aspect ratio of our surface. So we've got a width and a height. This is gonna be something like 16 by nine if you're full screened. If it's not full screened, then it's not gonna be 16 by nine. We get a field of view for the Y, a near clipping value point and a far clipping value point. So anything that's closer than 0 0.1 units to the camera, we won't see. Anything that's further than 100 units from the camera, we also won't see. And then we use the camera in our self state. So we basically need to be able to get this view projection into our shaders. We've already done this kind of thing for our vertices. If you've watched the vertices video. So we create a new struct called camera uniform. The view projection again is going to be a four by four matrix, which in this case we're representing with a four by four set of nested arrays. The values of each of them is going to be an F32. If we create a new camera uniform, so the default values that we stick into our uniform buffer. The view projection is going to be the identity matrix. And the identity matrix is again, going to be that 1.0 in a diagonal going from the top left of the four by four to the bottom right of the four by four. And then we have a function where we update the view projection. So from the camera settings, we can build the view projection matrix. This is the function that we defined earlier, this build view projection matrix, which does the view based on the calculations that we pass in. So where the camera is located, where it's looking, and what the up axis is in addition to the aspect ratio and other things for the perspective. So we calculate the view matrix, we calculate the projection matrix, we multiply these all together because we're doing one transform, then another transform, and then the final transform. And then in new, after we create our camera, we'll set up our new camera uniform using camera uniform new, which is the struct we just created. So this sets us up with our four by four identity matrix for the view projection. So we still need to update the view projection because we didn't start off with the, say, correct view projection. We started off with the identity matrix and we want the view projection inside of our camera to be set to the settings that we set up earlier, like three lines ago, right here. Create buffer in it is the same function that we used for the vertex and the index buffers. So we're doing the same thing here. We're creating a buffer with some data, in this case, byte muck again, and we're defining how we're going to use it. In this case, it's a uniform that we can copy data from to. Again, because we've used repr C here, we can just cast to the slice, and this is going to be our matrix packed into a buffer. Of course, once we actually do have the camera buffer, we also need to set up a bind group layout so that we can tell the pipeline what data to expect here. We use the at this point familiar bind group layout entry for binding zero. We set the visibility to the vertex shader because we're not gonna be using this in the fragment shader. And we set the buffer type to a uniform. Uniforms are what we've been using. It's read-only data that's copied to all of the compute nodes in the GPU. This won't have a dynamic offset because our data size isn't going to change at all. And then after we specify the bind group layout, we have to actually specify the bind group itself with the data that we're going to send in. So we've already done this before. We're gonna use a bind group descriptor struct. We're going to specify the layout to be the layout we just created. You can think of the layout as kind of like the Tetris hole that our data needs to fit. And then we pass in the actual data. So in this case, we take the camera buffer, we take the entire binding, so the entire byte slice, and we set it to the binding zero, which is exactly where we said we were going to. And of course, all of this needs to be above the render pipeline layout. So we're gonna do a little bit of code reorganization there so that all of the code that we just wrote 
is going to be inside or above the pipeline layout. This is because right next to our texture bind group layout, we're going to set up our camera bind group layout. So when we look at our bind groups, we see the texture bind group in our shader. Our texture bind group is group zero. So that means that our camera bind group is going to be group one because texture is zero here in our layout specification for the pipeline and our camera is one. And of course, because we didn't before, we're going to add the camera uniform, the camera buffer and the camera bind group to state, which means that we have to go all the way back up to state and drop the extra types in here. So camera uniform, WGPU buffer and WGPU bind group. This is the same approach we took for the diffuse bind group for our texture, as well as the index buffer and the vertex buffer and so on. And then we're jumping around a bit here, but in the render function, we need to set up these buffers like we set up all of the other buffers. In this case, we're putting set bind group one to camera bind group here. So just like we talked about before, group zero is going to be our texture and group one is going to be our bind group. Now to use this data in our vertex shader, the first thing we have to do is set up the camera uniform struct. This struct will define the type of data that lives in our buffer and how to interpret that. So we call it a matrix four by four of values F32, which is exactly how we set up this data to pass it in. It was a four by four array of F32s. And then in group one binding zero, we have our camera uniform, which is that buffer. And then to calculate the clip position, which I'll comment out instead of completely replacing right away, you can see that instead of directly taking the model position, we're now taking the model position and we're multiplying it by the view projection. So the view projection is a way to get something from its world coordinates through to the way that we need to display it in our 2D surface. We talked about the transformations a little bit earlier that are happening here. We've got both the view itself, which centers the view on the camera, and then we've got the projection matrix, which makes it so that the items that are closer to us are bigger than the items that are further from us, effectively by changing the amount of size that we're using in both of those Z indexes. It is important to note that multiplication order is important for matrix multiplication. So we put our vector on the right-hand side and our matrix on the left. Now I am a little confused because the image that they have and the image that we have at this point is not the same. Now I've checked the code and I can't see anything that is obviously wrong. I've debugged out the view projection. I've taken a look at pretty much everything. And what I have is not, is basically the uh, inverse Y of what this is. So the I have my point up top instead of on the bottom. I haven't seen anything in the tutorial that indicates that these vertices should be flipped in any way. So I'm not sure why this is upside down compared to what we have. So again, our texture is fine, but the vertices are in the other Y direction, basically. I don't see anything different from our vertex position and the end of the last tutorial gave us the same result that we currently have. So I'm gonna go forward with the fact that this is a bug in the tutorial or like this is just the wrong image or the image didn't get updated with the updating of the tutorial or something like that. So let's get into the camera controller. Now they've decided to just hand us the camera controller code so if we look at the camera controller struct, we get a speed, whether forward and backward, left and right are pressed, a process events function that takes window events and checks for each of those key codes and determines whether they're pressed or not. And then this update camera function, which sets up the forward direction and then normalizes it. Remember, normalize takes any vector and shrinks it or grows it to a vector length of one. So this is giving us just a direction to move in, not an amount to move. And it uses things like cross product to determine uh, the x-axis comparative to the y-axis and things like that. And basically just moves us around forward, backward, left, right using the keyboard. We stick the camera controller in our state and then in the new function, we'll create a new camera controller. In this case, we can kind of do it wherever we want to because the camera controller new function, I believe takes a speed if I remember correctly. Yeah, so we're just passing in some speed. So it doesn't depend on any of the other things we're doing in new, which is great. And remember this is still impl on state. So inside of our input function, we get a camera controller process events, which is the function we defined on the other struct. 
and we pass in the window event. Now this controls our camera, but it doesn't update the uniform. So the tutorial walks us through three options for doing that. One is creating a separate buffer and then copying the contents into the camera buffer uniform. And it says that this is how it's typically done because it allows the camera buffer uniform to be read only on the GPU, which means that it can do some speed optimizations for reading from that data because only the GPU really needs to uh, care about it. We could also write to the buffer itself, or we can use the write buffer on our render queue. In this case, we're gonna write buffer on the render queue. So in update, we'll get the camera controller, we'll update our camera, we'll get the camera uniform from our state, and we'll update the view projection, and then we'll use the queue to write the camera buffer using byte mock using the camera uniform data. So now if we move the camera, we can see that our pentagram is moving. So forward and backward, left and right, you can see that we aren't rendering the back spaces. So if we kind of turn this around all the way, uh, we don't actually see anything render and that's our camera. So you can see as we go backwards, the view projection or the area that we are rendering using the back of our view projection is bigger than if we bring it closer, which is a smaller rectangle, which is that perspective that we're getting from this view projection. Now, one thing I found out interesting about the challenge here, which is have the model rotate on its own independently of the camera, is that they do have a model rotation, which is a CG math degrees struct. And then we construct a, a four by four matrix using CG math matrix four from angle Z with that rotation degree, but that is embedded in the view projection. So when they say independently of the camera, I think what they mean is the independently of the camera position itself not independently of the camera functions. So keep that in mind if you do decide to do this challenge because the view projection is a function on the camera, or at least it's a function on a camera related struct. It is part of the view projection. It's not just something that is totally independent. So that's it, that's the cameras for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will catch you in the next Learn WGPU video.